In the last module, we encountered a new type of intermediate, an enolate ion, which was formed during conjugate addition to alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. These enolates and their protonated counterparts, enols, are extremely important in organic and biochemistry, and their chemistry will be the focus of the next several videos. Carbonyl compounds have relatively acidic alpha protons, those on sp3 carbons adjacent to the carbonyl group. They're much more acidic than typical CH groups because their conjugate bases are resonance stabilized. They're conjugated systems. In fact, the pKa of the average ketone or aldehyde is around 20, more than 25 orders of magnitude more acidic than the average alkane. The pKa's of other carbonyl compounds vary over several orders of magnitude. The alpha protons of esters, for instance, have pKa's around 25, while the protons immediately between two carbonyl groups have pKa's between 10 and 15. We can explain this difference in pKa by examining the molecular orbitals that participate in this reaction. To do this, I'm going to draw a carbonyl compound in a bit of a strange orientation, but bear with me. It appears that the base donates electrons into sigma star CH, but we know that's not a very good acceptor orbital on its own. In fact, alpha protons can only be deprotonated from a specific conformation of the carbonyl compound, when the CH bond is aligned parallel to pi star CO so that the electrons from the breaking CH bond have a decent acceptor orbital to go into. So we could, we could describe the molecular orbital interactions this way. The base donates into sigma star CH, while sigma CH donates into pi star CO. So the lower in energy a pi star CO, the more electrophilic the carbonyl group, the more acidic it's alpha protons. Hence, why the alpha protons of esters are less acidic than those of ketones or aldehydes. The enolates that form from this acid-base reaction are conjugated systems whose homos have lobes at both the oxygen and the alpha carbon, the two sites where the negative charge is localized. This means that enolates can react with electrophiles at either site. One consequence of this delocalization is that enolates can be protonated at either carbon, which gives us a carbonyl compound, or at oxygen. This gives us an enol. This process, shuffling an H plus between the alpha carbon and the oxygen, is called ketoenol tautomerization. In fact, most carbonyl compounds are undergoing this process all the time, and they exist in equilibrium with their enols. In general, enols are usually less stable than their carbonyl tautomers, so are usually only present in small quantities. But even small quantities can be measured. We often see small peaks in the NMR and IR spectra of carbonyl compounds that correspond to their enols. The tautomerization process happens under any conditions, neutral, acidic, or basic. The mechanisms vary slightly depending on the conditions. Under neutral conditions, we don't have any strong bases around to deprotonate the alpha carbon, so that step is quite slow. Under basic conditions, the initial deprotonation is faster. Acids catalyze the reaction by protonating the carbonyl group first, making CO pi star more ele electrophilic and therefore the alpha proton easier to remove. We'll delve a bit deeper into the reactivity of enols and enolates in the next videos.